Hey guys, Sorin here. So today we're going to do an undervolt on an NVIDIA GPU. This works on GPUs that are Pascal or newer. And mind you, while this trick using MSC Afterburner works on AMD cards, it's better to use Watman on AMD cards because usually that interface is more intuitive when thinking about the power states AMD cards have. That doesn't mean it doesn't work, it just might be easier using Vatman. Now, this works on NVIDIA GPUs that are Pascal or newer as I said, and even in some notebooks. You have to try it for yourself. This is a desktop PC and we're running a GTX 1050 Ti. It's an entry level card, but it's perfect to showcase this process. So, why would you want to undervolt your GPU? Well, your GPU can increase its, its clocks way past the usual boost, the default boost. Let's just start MSC Afterburner. Now, you see, you have the GPU clock that is 1342 MHz, and it can boost, that's a the boost clock means it's guaranteed that it will boost to this frequency, 1455. But Pascal GPUs and newer have a technology called GPU Boost that allows the GPU to auto overclock itself if the temperature allows it. So basically it's going to increase its clock and its voltage sometimes if it has room. That's pretty darn great, but when on heavier cars that draw a lot more power than this 1050 Ti, when we're gaming or doing something intensive, as temperature increases, that extra boost we get might decrease. That means we can lose performance and we, we usually want more performance. So how, do, how does undervolting come into play? If, if we manage to undervolt while keeping the card at its maximum core, not the boost clock, its maximum core clock, we get lower temperatures on the core and then our card will stay at a higher frequency much longer, resulting in a higher performance. Now, how do we find this maximum clock past the boost clock? Well, it's pretty easy. We're going to use HW Info of free utility, run it in sensor only mode. Let's wait for it to start. And now let's just scroll down to the GPU section. So we, here we have the GPU temperature, the core voltage, the power, and our GPU clock. As you can see, it's at the stock clock, as we are not doing basically anything right now. And it's on 0, 0 0.8 volt. Okay, now how can we actually find out how much can it go to? Just do anything 3D intensive. So for example, if I just open heaven in windowed mode, you're going to see it's, that it's going to boost itself. Let's just give it a couple of seconds to start. There we go. So. See, it's way over what our guaranteed boost clock is. If we have 1455 MHz boost clock, it actually goes much, much higher, closer to 1800 MHz. And from experience, I can tell you that in games, it also goes to 1809 around that value. So now that we know this value, we're going to note this. So let's minimize this. We're going to note this so we can use it in our actually so you can so we can use this in our actual undervolt process without losing performance. So the goal is to undervolt without losing performance. So 
just open any spreadsheet software. I use Excel, you can use Google Sheets or whatever. I've already noted myself the core clock, the boost clock and the max clock. Now, we're going to use afterburner. Open it, Control F. Don't let the graph scare you. What we have over here is the frequency in megahertz and the voltage in millivolts. So we can see that our card currently goes up to 1.050 volts. We want to lower that while maintaining the clock. So if we were to go at 0 0.975, after selecting it, there's a problem. We can see that it says 1708. Well, that's lower than what we want to achieve. If we were to lock the card here and tell it not to go above this voltage, we're basically going to lose performance. So how do we avoid this? Press L to lock this and then increase the core clock until you reach the desired value. I'm going to aim for 1809. So decrease this a little, press OK. As you can see, after you press OK, it shifts a little. So now it's exactly where I want it to be. Yes, I did use the slider to increase the frequency, but as we're not going above the max clock, we're not actually overclocking. We're, we're just decreasing the voltage. We're not increasing the clocks. So after doing this, in order to tell our car that this is the max frequency and voltage we want, we need to drag these points below that point. We're going to quickly do this. And hit apply. As you can see, it straightened the curve. So let's press L again. If you forget to press L to unlock the voltage, your card will stay at 0 0.975 forever. See the current. Now, if you just press L again, so the yellow line will disappear and press apply, check this out. It already decreased below 975. And it's now actually lower than it's has been when it was stuck. That's a good thing, we'll have, we will have better idle temperatures. What you want to do now to make sure that all this is working properly and your card can actually reach that max clock while being under vaulted, you're going to want to run some benchmarks. I recommend you run at least two types of be benchmarks. I usually run Unigine Heaven and 3 Mark Time Spy. That way I can ensure that the card is pretty stable before I start gaming with that undervolt. I always game before making sure to, uh, before saving a profile or actually setting that undervolt setting at startup so I can be sure that I won't get blue screens or any errors while I game or do something important. Mind you, undervolting does not damage your hardware. It's just decreasing the voltage and if you decrease it too much, let's say you go to 0, 0,900, that's probably unstable for this card. You're just going to get a blue screen in the worst case scenario or your game will hang or exit or display driver fail and you just need to dial back the settings. And worse comes to worse, you're just going to have to restart, reboot the PC and that's about it. If you've put an unstable undervolt settings on startup, you will just have to enter safe mode, disable this, reset it to default values and etc. That's why I always test very well before actually applying something at startup. So I won't bore you with the actual benchmark running and stuff like this. I've already done this on this GPU to showcase what you can achieve even on such an entry level card and from what I no, the powerful, the more power hungry the card, the better results you can yield. And on notebooks, usually, if the notebooks 
if the notebook model allows you to. Usually you'll see bigger improvements just because notebooks suck at heat management. So this is my final chart. As you can see, we have a table with benchmark score, GPU power max, GPU core voltage max, and GPU temperature max. And if at stock, we were at 63 degrees in Unigine Heaven and 62 in 3D Mark Time Spy. Well, when I went to the max under voltage, I actually gone from 63 to 59 degrees and from 62 to 58 degrees. That's a couple of degrees shaved without losing performance for free. And then I went a step further, I wanted to overclock the card. You can do this, it's, you can, you can't, it's up to you, it's optional. I just wanted to push the card a little bit more. So at 0 0.925 volt, it wasn't stable with any overclock. So I had to go to 0 0.950. And it allowed me to go from 1809, 1809 to 1860 at core. And I already knew from previous meddlings that the memory could support a 600 megahertz boost. That gave me lower degrees than stock. We're talking of about two degrees, but it's free. And an 8% performance increase from stock clocks just by meddling around in afterburner for a couple of minutes. So 8% performance increase and 2 degrees shaved in benchmarks. I ran all the tests 3 times to make an average and it always was around 8% increase performance. So if you're curious on how to both undervolt and overclock at the same time, if you've been following me so far, it's pretty straightforward. Just go to afterburner control F again. So let's say that you're settled. You want at 9, 0 0.975 volt, a bigger frequency. Well, all you have to do is adjust the curve again. So if you would like to go to my value of 1860, you would just need to increase the core clock until this number matches your desired frequency. So we're going to do it. Just a little more. Press apply. And now press L to lock this. And again, we need to tell the GPU that this is the voltage we need to stop. It needs to stop at and the frequency it needs to stop at. And this being higher then your maximum speed without having any under voltage overclocking, pardon. It's an overclock. So we're going to drag these points below that point again. Click apply, don't forget to click L again, click apply, and I've already tested this GPU, 600 megahertz is perfectly stable of an increase to the memory clock. So this is basically my setting for an 8% performance increase for this MSC 1050 Ti. So that's about it, we've just undervolted and then we went to an undervolted setting, setting while increasing the core clock. So we're undervolted and overclocking at the same time for this boost in performance. Now, I've also done some graphs. Everybody does graphs nowadays, so I did some graphs. As you can see, the results from the table. We have obviously the best scores when overclocked, but we also have lower temps than on stock. So that's pretty amazing. We, you can shave a couple of degrees while adding some performance to your card. Mind you probably what I did over here on this 1050 Ti because of the thermals 
it would probably be a better option to further increase the voltage a bit so a more conservative undervolt so we can go higher with the core clock and the memory clock why because this card doesn't draw so much power so it probably benefit in performance more from a higher clock but this was just to show you how to undervolt and how to overclock while being undervolted so if you find this video useful don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel and tell me what other videos like this would you like to see in the future thanks so much for watching bye